From cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. They're inside together, sitting at a poker table. Listen, what the f are you doing with that ratchet ass bitch? I'm playing poker, what are you talking about? What's this? Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Tiffany Crawford is a young woman determined to keep her family together. Concerned that her boyfriend spends too much time away from her and their children, Tiffany comes to Cheaters in her quest for the truth. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. When we first got together, we were always going places, we were always doing things, and granted, this is before we had two children, but even after, you know, our firstborn, we were still doing things, we were still going out, and then now we just had our second, and it, it's all changed. It's, he does, it seems like he just doesn't want to be around. He doesn't, he doesn't want that life anymore. You know, he tells me that uh, that he works late, but also I know that he likes to play poker, and there's some poker nights that he'll go out and play with his friends, you know, uh, go out for the night, and I don't mind that. I understand, you know, guys need guy time, um, but it, I don't know, I just, there just seems to be something off. John, age 24, a windshield repairman accused of ignoring cracks in his relationship. Briefed with the particulars of the case, Cheater's agents stake out the workplace of the suspect. Near sundown, John leaves work and drives to a seedy area of town. The suspect and his cheater's shadow arrive at a gentleman's club. John gets out of his car and walks into the strip club. He has cheated on the past. Um, you know, I've actually caught him before, and he is you know, doing the same stuff, lying. Um, I'm getting blocked phone calls at night from other girls saying that, that he's been with them, that I need to leave him, that I'm stupid for staying. But when I ask him about these, then he says that they're just jealous that he's still with me after all this time. When I get these phone calls, to be honest, I get mad. I don't want to believe that what they're saying is true. Um, but on the other hand, why would they lie? You know, I think about it, why why so many girls? Why would they have tried to reach out to me and tell me if it wasn't true? I mean, how many girls could actually be that jealous? Inside, Cheater's operatives track the suspect as he stands at one of the stages talking to an unknown female. The woman and John converse as she shakes her rump on stage. After a long while, the suspect leaves the club with a spring in his step. John returns home, wrapping up this night's surveillance. I've forgiven John a lot in the past for a lot of different things that he's done, um, some of them being cheating. But if I find out that he's cheating on me again, I already told him it's done, it's over. I can't, I can't go through this anymore. I can't put my kids through this anymore. They don't deserve it and I don't deserve it. We deserve to have him there 100% with us full time and he can't just be running around on me. Knowing the suspect's schedule, the cheater surveillance team continues the stakeout of John's workplace. Sometime in the afternoon, the suspect leaves work. John follows the same route he drove the day before, arriving back at the same strip club. The deceitful boyfriend goes into the establishment where he meets the same dancer, now identified only as Lucky. The entertainer gives the suspect a few lap dances. During his private show, Lucky grinds on John, kissing him passionately. After some time and quite a bit of money later, the suspect exits the dance bar. John returns home to a disconcerted Tiffany. As with previous days, Cheaters investigators continue the stakeout of John's workplace. The suspect leaves this evening, headed down the same route, back to the very same strip club he visited before. Meeting with Lucky seems to be a regular occurrence. Dropping more cash, John receives more lap dances from his regular lady. At some point in the evening, the twosome sit quietly, kissing at a booth. 
Lucky even walks John to the exit to give him a goodbye kiss. As the suspect heads home for the evening, Cheaters concludes the case for a betrayed Tiffany. Coming up, the confrontation. Documenting all lies and deceit, Cheaters calls on Tiffany to arrange for her to view the facts. With fear and anger building in her heart, Tiffany meets up with the intention of protecting her family and relationship. Tiffany, I know it's been kind of a long week. I'd like to say thank you for coming out this evening. I know you've been going through a lot with your relationship. But Tiffany, as you know, we have conducted our investigation. My question is, are you prepared to see what we have come up with? Yeah. I want to see it. All right. Tiffany, we begin our investigation outside of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges and he gets into his vehicle and leaves. As our detectives follow John, he turns into a strip club and he parks his car. That's when we see him get out and John walks inside. That's when we see him conversing with this unknown female and that's when things get a little bit more friendly than I'd say your average customer. He begins to kiss this woman. Tiffany, he gets a phone call when all this is going on. What you're about to hear is the audio from that. Tell me if you remember this. Huh? Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, uh, just playing a uh, game of poker with the boys, watching uh, the basketball game, the finals. When are you gonna be home? I think you finish up this poker game. Uh, I'll be leaving and yeah, I should be home in about 30 minutes. Alright, well, uh, I'll leave a little bit. Uh, you know how these poker games are. Alright, love you too. See you soon. Bye. I'm After finishing up the phone call with you, he then returns inside the strip club and some time passes and he leaves. That's when we see him return home for the evening. Now, on this day of our investigation, Tiffany, we're outside. Of John's workplace. A while later, John emerges after what seems to be a long day. As our detectives follow John, he arrives at that same strip club, pulls in, parks his vehicle, and walks right back inside once again. That's when we see him receiving multiple lap dances in a VIP section of the strip club and kissing this unknown female. And before leaving, he kisses this female and smiles while walking out the door. He then nonchalantly walks outside, jogs to his car, and returns home for the evening. So seeing your money and your honey go to a strip club, I mean, how does that make you feel? It pisses me off. That is not what I work hard for. So Tiffany, after everything that you've just seen, my question for you is, are you ready to go confront John? Let's go. All right, well, listen. I'm ready. We got Detective Gomez on scene. He's at that same strip club that they're at. It's called the Pearl. If we get in the vans and get the location, we can bust him. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Right this way, please. Thank you. 
the conclusion. They're inside together, sitting at a poker table. What the f are you doing with that ratchet ass bitch? We're done.
I don't know how you feel because I'm not in your position. Be that shit on camera, man. How the f do you feel? Let's just go. How do you feel, bitch? I feel good. How you feel, I feel good, bitch. I feel good. Look what I got. Look what I got. Look what I got. You bitch. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on, bitch. Look at me. Look at you. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, bitch. Look at me, ho. Look at me. Oh. I don't even have to touch you. You do it yourself. Dumbass bitch. Yeah. Heard it, ho. Bitch. John, do you have anything to say about your girl or anything? About your kids? You guys don't know how real this is. You guys just think it's all make believe in front of cameras. It's not. This isn't make believe at all. It's just about fixing what happened with you and your girl. Okay, so how was all this LED lights? How was so this we can little see going on? That's so we can Okay, hear sorry, you. I don't mean to hit it, but I just want to beat it like a damn Congo drone. I'm not getting anything from you. Yet. After the chaotic confrontation, Tiffany struggles to understand why the suspect would treat his family in such a callous manner. Later, Cheaters informs you on how she copes with her experience. Now, Brian Bass returns to give more details of the night he caught his girlfriend with another woman on Cheaters. Yeah, during the bust, all that was going through my mind was pretty much just how terrible the last few months had been and just how rough it was on me and how it just kind of tore me apart emotionally. Honestly, I, I uh, saw red at first and I was really, really upset and couldn't control my anger a little bit and it felt like a huge burden was relieved though afterwards. What the hell? differently to make this relationship work out. Uh, I could have paid a little more attention. I could have worked less. But honestly, I kind of feel like uh, we, we hit that point of no return maybe six months ago. And uh, we never looked back. I can't this wait ridiculous. for this to be on TV. Ridiculous. No, I can't wait not, for this to be on TV. You're pathetic that you did that to me. You're dad. See what you. 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 I can't wait. It'll be satisfying. went down I actually uh, immediately felt like I needed to drink honestly I just need to get out there do my own thing meet new people uh, and just uh, never never quit keep going that's it live every day like it's the last disturbing realization of her boyfriend's destructive behavior, Tiffany Crawford seems determined to hold her relationship together. Tiffany declares that although she forgives him, this will absolutely be the last time. The suspect, John, at first admits he's too embarrassed to talk to Cheater's producers. Then John finally expresses that he has cut off all contact with his former companion. The companion, known as Lucky, only states to Cheater's that she believes the suspect will be back in the club sooner or later.
your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. From Cheater Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. Go, 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 go. What are you doing? You want to make sure that I don't care about you. You got me. You got me. Real reality television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Fueled by neglect, Jess Allen recognizes something humorless goes on with her boyfriend. Taking a resolute stance, Jess comes to the experts in fidelity for answers to her questions. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. Well, he's been a little bit more distant lately. Like, um, I just feel like he just wants to be all business with me. Like, maybe he's just around still for stage time, um, you know, using this as a vessel to further his comedy career. But he's kind of washed up. I, he's, you know, I've been out a lot, and he's been passive aggressive toward me a lot. Um, yeah, he's not taking me out. He's not, you know, um, being affectionate toward me. It's, you know, something's going on. Dave Beckers, age 45, a part-time comic suspected of turning his relationship into a bad joke. Cheaters deploys a squad to stake out the home Jess shares with the suspect. Just after sundown, Beckers and Jess leave the residence, followed tightly by a cheater's mobile unit. The client and her boyfriend drive across town to a comedy club. The pair enter the building. Inside, Beggar's bellies up to the bar as Jess talks to a few people in the lobby. While Jess grabs a table for them, the suspect stays at the bar. An unknown female, the bartender, walks over to the suspect's spot and begins chatting with him. Well, I hear a lot of rumors when I'm out of town that Dave's talking to other girls around the comedy clubs, and, you know, I don't want to jump to conclusions and believe them. I know people could be petty, especially when it comes to other people becoming successful. And um, when I come back home from being on the road, I try my best to connect with him, you know, to catch up, go out, have fun. But he doesn't want to do that. He always tells me, oh, well, you seem tired, so I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And he doesn't say where he's going. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to fight with him. I just want to I just want to catch up and, you know, and, you know, nurture our relationship further. And he's just, he's up to something. Dave continues to smooze with the pretty barmaid for a short while. And after a few moments, the unknown female steps out from behind the bar and Beggars follows her outside. On the patio, the suspect and his sexy bartender continue the conversation. Beggars plays with a woman's hair as they talk. Finally, the bartender finishes her cigarette. Jess then arrives, interrupting the conversation. Snagging her guy, Jess and Beggars finally leave. We have spent five years together. We used to be each other's number one fans. We used to really support each other. And, you know, sometimes he's still sweet to me. It happens very, very far in between periods of arguing, but sometimes he tells me I'm great, I love you, and that just makes me think, well, what, what did you do? Like, why are you trying to finesse me like this? And it's just, it's not the Dave that I, you know, spilt my life with for these last few years. You know, if Dave's cheating on me, I am not forgiving him. He is out, I am throwing all of his stuff to the street, and I will never let him work in the clubs with me again. Cheaters detectives keep vigil over Jess and the suspect's residence. Sometime later, agents spot beggars as he leaves home. A mobile unit tails him across town to a strip mall parking lot. Beggars gets out and waits a few minutes. 
Shortly, the pretty bartender from previous surveillance, now identified only as Stormy, arrives in her SUV. Beggars take Stormy's purse, pops the trunk of his own vehicle, and retrieves what can only be described as an art piece. The unlikely duo stroll to a nearby restaurant for a quick bite. On the patio, Beggars romantically feeds his lunch day the bite of his own dish. A short while later, having finished their repast, Beggars and Stormy walk around the area to an art house. A few minutes later, the pair leave the art house without Beggars' art piece. The suspect returns his companion to her vehicle and leaves, ending this day of surveillance. With intel from Jess that she left town on business, Cheater's agents stick to the game plan of staking out the residence. After dark, operatives watch as Beggars exits. The trailing Cheater squad notes the suspect takes the known path to the comedy club. Beggars enters the building, and guess who he meets? Stormy, of course. They converse at a table for a bit before entering the stage area. Once inside, Beggars commences to do his stand-up routine in front of an almost empty room. After his bit finishes, Beggars and Stormy leave the club. The suspect and his hot date traips back to his parked car. The lovers get into the vehicle and take the familiar route back to his residence. Beggars escort Stormy into the dwelling he shares with Jess. Footage provided by one of two interior cameras placed by Jess shows the impious sweethearts sharing an impetuous kiss. Stormy steps into another room as the suspect sits down. When the young hottie returns, she obviously has an interesting evening planned, being that she's stripped down to a thong and carries a pair of handcuffs. Stormy climbs into the suspect's lap for a few minutes, and eventually Stormy leads Beggars to the kitchen area. The bartender handcuffs the suspect to a beam supporting the kitchen ceiling. With Beggars hanging by his arms, Stormy proceeds to kiss and fondle him. However, the joke lies on the suspect as Cheaters ties up the case for a betrayed Jess. Coming up, the confrontation. With all evidence pointing to infidelity firmly established, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jess to examine the sorrowful information. Summoning all her stoic courage, Jess determines to learn the truth. Jess, first thing I'd like to say is um, thank you for coming out this evening. I understand that you've been going through a lot. As you know, we have conducted our investigation, Jess. My question for you is, are you prepared to see the evidence that we have come up with? Yes. OK, fair enough. Jess, we begin our investigation outside of your residence. We see Dave emerge. He walks over to his vehicle and he gets inside. He has something in his hand. Not really sure what that was, but it looked like a form of some sculpture. Yeah, he does this weird thing with dolls. Okay. Well, he leaves and then he arrives at a parking lot. We see him get out of his vehicle. He closes the door. Uh -huh. A few moments later, that blonde girl pulls up uh -huh. and we see Dave go to the back of his trunk and pull out that doll sculpture. And they walk away together. That's when we see them go across the way and they arrive at a restaurant. Dave opens up the door for her. They walk inside, sit at the outdoor patio and share a meal. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize her? Yeah, that's Stormy. That's Stormy? Yeah. Does this seem strange to you at this point? No, we, we are, we're all friends. It's, okay. You know. After finishing up their meal, they return to that parking lot. That's when we see Dave say goodbye to Stormy. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. On this day, as our detectives follow Dave, he arrives at the comedy club. Okay. He parks, gets out of his vehicle, and he walks inside. That's when we see him okay. go sit out on the patio with Stormy. We then see Dave doing his bit up on the stage while Stormy watches. After he finishes up, she hands him the keys to his car. Mm -hmm. They walk out together, and they leave together. As our detectives follow Dave, he then arrives back at your residence. Mm -hmm. We see the two of them walk inside holding hands, and that's when he points out his sculpture of doll collections. Whoa. And she lays a kiss they on Dave. They just kiss? They did. Dave then proceeds to sit on 
the chair. Whoa. She goes into the bathroom, comes out completely topless with her underwear on only. Oh my gosh. And a pair of handcuffs. That's my friend. This That's is... my chair. You recall that surveillance equipment that we installed in your house when we began this oh, whole yeah, process? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we had a hidden audio conversation we picked up, and that's uh -huh. what you're about to listen to. She's gone. She's in Seattle. She is not coming back. We know it's funny. I was uh, jealous of her getting that kid, and now I'm like, huh? In Seattle, a bunch of sweaty hippies or here. My friend will come to the chair. I could just strangle her right now. I completely like, understand that. Like we have, this is five years of my life with my friend. I, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be sick. After finishing yeah. up that little conversation, Dave stands up, Stormy takes him over to the rafter in the house, handcuffs him, begins to make out with him, begins to kiss him multiple times. Whoa. And you could only imagine what else happens. Jess, I think you've seen enough. At this point in time, why don't we get in the vans, get on the road. We can get to that comedy club. They're there together. Are you ready to bust, Dave? I'm ready to bust, Dance Dave. Mm -hmm. All right. Both of them. Right this way, please. Let's do this. Excuse us. together. Thank you. 
Dave, I think you I think you need to take a deep breath and relax. All right, listen. You guys had a great relationship and then something went wrong. Obviously, she's gone a lot. I understand that. Why wouldn't you just communicate that to her in the first place and just say, hey, listen, sweetie, you're gone so much. Did you not see how she reacted? Did you not see how she reacted? Okay, she beat the out of me in front of the cameras. If I would have told her any of that would have happened, she would have beat the out of me then. Dude, you got some issues, man. You got some Anger issues, Why does she have it? Well, because she's angry because you cheated on her. I mean, I could show you if you want to see it again. No, I'm good. I'm I'm fine. I and you made her one of your doll yeah, sculptures. That looked pretty near and dear. You yeah, made... you're 40 playing with dolls. That's okay. good. There we go. There we go. That's Great. awesome. Yeah. Do you think it would have been a better idea to maybe get like a sex doll to play with instead of a real one? Dave, you two were spending a lot of time I, together. I no, I was there. That's me. I no, you don't have to show me. Okay. But why did you do that? Why did I do it? Yeah. She's hot okay and she's gone that's why i did it what would you do look at that look at that that's amazing it's beautiful and this is gone all time you know i would be honest with my artistic girlfriend and tell her how i truly feel instead of lying and cheating on her thank you well guess what it's done okay it's over it's done so it's over now that you've screwed up yeah it's over now that she beat over now that she beat out of me so it's over your face is bleeding and i can't even recognize you dave it's so terrible i can't wait to go Cops, it's gonna be awesome. Really, Dave, that's all you have to say instead of apologizing. What else do you want me to say? Apologize. What? No, I don't apologize. She beat the out of me. What the am I gonna say to her? Hit me again. You, I would say sorry. What do you want to do? This insults me up to you. Do you feel like you've gotten what you've needed? Um, yeah, I've gotten what I needed. Mm -hmm. Dot com. Completely disgusted by her boyfriend's atrocious behavior, Jess realizes she has a difficult decision to make. At the end of the show, Cheaters reveals her plan for the future. But now, Cheaters welcomes Sarah Reed. Sarah comes forward to clear up how her relationship with her husband's best friend was unveiled on Cheaters. When we were caught, I was definitely embarrassed. Um, not only in my actions, but just the confrontation in itself was just it was in a public place, so it was kind of embarrassing having so many people staring at us and sort of knowing what we did without knowing the backstory behind it. What are you doing, man? Oh, okay, calm down. My wife's here. You're with my wife, yeah? We're just, just having, having a pie. Having a pie, having a couple of beers. Is it nice? Is it nice? Is it nice? It's him. Why would you do this to your best friend? Why would you do this to your husband? What are you doing? Simon, what are you doing? Good. Good. Having a beer. Having some pie. Right. Why would you do this to your friend, Chris? What did I do? What did I do? Oh, we haven't done anything. We're, eat, we're literally eating pie. We haven't I've done seen anything. I've seen what you've been up to. There's what? no videos. I've there's seen no videos. Simon, there's I've no videos. It. When I started seeing Chris, it really was not intentional, um, I, the, the act of cheating. It just kind of slowly progressed. He came to stay with Simon and I. And we ended up at first just hanging out as friends, and then kind of one thing led to another, and it progressed and progressed. And um, then we ended up getting together. Um, I, we knew it was wrong at the time, but just because Simon and Chris had been friends for so long, and Chris, Simon and I were married, it just made for a really sort of bizarre love triangle. Took my heart, you sliced the open, you shoved up my ass and me. That's how bad it is. Like, don't come home. Find a way home. Yourself. Go yourself. Be yourself. Fuck you guys. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Yeah. What's up? The relationship with Chris um, has actually gone beyond my expectations. And now that I'm divorced, we actually are together. And we are actually planning on getting married ourselves in, within the next year or so. We just kind of realized that we're more compatible. Um, we're, we're into the same things, the same music. We both are very social and we enjoy um, spending time with each other. Following the confrontation, Jess Allen realizes her comedy partner deserves to be left alone. 
Jess has also broken off the friendship she once had with the suspect's companion. For his part in the whole ordeal, Dave Beggers refuses to take any responsibility. When questioned by Cheater's producers, the suspect claims, I can't believe she'd further her career by ruining mine the way she did. Jess didn't have to pull all this out in the open. Made me look like an ass in my own hangout. I can't even go back in there without getting laughed off stage. The suspect's companion, Stormy, did not wish to comment to Cheaters on her involvement. cameras you are about to view actual true stories filmed live documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity this program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue coming up on this episode of cheaters don't look are you running for say you better keep going Get Touch a woman like that. Get the out of my face. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Jessica Sanders wonders about her boyfriend's shift in demeanor. Concerned by his lack of transparency, Jessica begs assistance from the detectives at Cheaters. I'm Clark Gable, and this is Cheaters. What I've noticed different besides the fact that he works hours and hours and hours a day, he'll go out of town randomly. Aside from that, I have noticed just the distance between us is completely different. It's completely changed. The communication that we once had is no longer there. The nights that we'll go out and just say, hey, babe, let's just go have fun tonight. That's no longer. Um, his friends, he's gotten a little more secretive as far as who he's hanging around. Everything has changed. It's a complete 180. Suspect's identity withheld. Age 35. A referee accused of foul play with his relationship. Cheaters dispatches agents to the home the suspect shares with Jessica. On this day, the suspect leaves driving away in his car. Followed by the cheater's team, the suspect arrives at a park. Sometime later, an unknown female pulls up into the spot next to the suspect. The referee greets the woman with a hug and a kiss. Holding the passenger door open like a gentleman, the suspect puts his mysterious lady into his vehicle. He then climbs into the driver's seat and the pair begin to kiss. We do sleep together, um, and it's at his discretion. We sleep together. Um, several nights, I'll go sleep on the couch when I'm feeling a certain way about um, how he comes home smelling. He'll come home smelling fruity. And I know you've been refereeing a game for hours at a time. You're not supposed to be smelling like fruit and strawberries. So I'll go sleep on the couch, come back, and he'll be. I'll wake up and he's gone. When I do confront him about smelling funny or smelling weird or fruity, he'll say it's his air freshener inside of his car. Um, he's been smoking or he's been smoking cigarettes and he didn't want to come in my home smelling like cigarettes. So he'll tell me, oh, it was just the air freshener inside of my car. And that's his explanation for smelling like a completely different woman. A while later, the suspect removes his striped referee shirt. The mystery woman gets out of the suspect's car, and leading the way, the femme fatale saunters down the sidewalk toward the trees. 
Quite some time later, the suspect and his companion finish their jaunt through the park. The deceitful referee escorts his partner to her vehicle, leaning in to give the woman a goodbye kiss. The suspect then gets into his car for the return ride home to a disconsolate Jessica. Deep down inside, I know. I know what's going on. But you never really want to just say, hey, he's cheating on me. I'm finna leave him. I wanted to just avoid this for so long. Just avoid finding out the truth. It's not just a feeling anymore. A year ago, it was just like a feeling. But now I'm like, okay, you think I'm stupid now. So I'm. this is what you're going to do? This is what I'm going to do. Cheaters operatives continue the stakeout of Jessica and the suspect's residence. After some time, the suspect emerges, carrying a bag and garbed in referee gear. The suspect drives to his favorite park, pulling into a spot next to an unknown vehicle. The woman from previous surveillance, now identified only as Tanay, gets out to greet the suspect. Taking off his referee clothing again, the suspect preps himself for a romantic walk through the park. At some point, the pair stop on a bridge to admire the surroundings. They passionately kiss. After some time, the two playful lovers emerge from the trees. Tanay straddles her referee's back. The suspect puts her down near the vehicle. Before leaving, the roguish referee shares a few intimate kisses. And finally pulling away, Tanay turns to her vehicle. The suspect gives her a goodbye tap on her ample bottom. As the man returns to his car, the van pulls away, ending this day of surveillance. Cheaters investigators continue to stake out Jessica and the suspect's residence. The suspect emerges from his abode and leaves for the day. He packs his gear into his trunk and drives away. Definitively noting the routine, Cheaters follows the suspect to his regular hangout, the park. Tanay, who's been waiting for him, greets her referee. The young lady then gets into the suspect's car. Today's dalliance goes into another direction. Instead of a walk in the park, the pair drive to a nearby hotel. Holding his paramour's hand, the suspect escorts the woman into the building. A long while later, the suspect and Tanay exit the hotel. The duo walk across the parking lot to a breakfast restaurant. Grabbing a booth, the suspect sits down next to his lover, cuddling and kissing her sweetly. Sometime later, the suspect and Tanay leave the restaurant. They drive back to the park, and as the suspect gives Tanay a final kiss, Cheaters prepares to head back to headquarters to prep a package for a distressed Jessica. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's infidelity proven, Cheaters requests a meeting with Jessica to disclose the findings. Feeling uncomfortable, Jessica attempts to prepare herself for the disheartening news. As you know, Jessica, we have conducted our investigation and we have come up with some pretty interesting findings. Are you prepared to see that? I'm as ready as I'm gonna be. I'm just not ready to get this over with. Okay. Move forward or stay. We begin our investigation outside of your residence. A few moments later, we see emerge He's in his referee outfit. He gets into his vehicle and he leaves. As our detectives follow he arrives at a park. And sometime later, this unknown vehicle arrives and this woman steps out. They embrace with a hug. You recognize her at all? I don't, but we about to get to know each other. Okay, well, continuing on, this woman gets into the passenger side of the vehicle. He opens the door for her and he shuts it. He then walks in, gets in on the driver's side, and it's really not clear what's going on in the vehicle, but I can see her leaning over into the driver's side. When gets out, he looks a little sweaty. He takes off his referee shirt, puts it in the back, and they walk past the vehicles and into the park. That's what we see moments later after a walk through the park. He opens the door for this unknown female, reaches in for a kiss, closes the door, goes back over to his vehicle. She leaves, and so does he. On this day, we are outside of your residence. 
few moments later, we see emerge and dressed in some business attire. As our detectives follow him, he arrives at the park where that same woman is waiting for him. He greets her with a very long hug and a kiss. That's when he proceeds to put her in the passenger side of his vehicle and they drive together and they arrive at a hotel. As you can see, he opens the car door, escorts her out of the vehicle and they hold hands and walk inside together. They get a room together and a while later, they come back out of the hotel. After finishing up their antics there, they walk across the street to a Waffle House. They go inside and get very comfortable with each other. While he's inside of this Waffle House, Jessica, he receives a phone call. What you're about to hear is the audio from that phone call. Tell me if you remember this. So Jessica, at this point in time, with the intel that we have, they're at the same park together. We're going there right now. Are you ready, Jessica, to, to confront? I'm ready. It is what it is. All right. I saw what I needed to see. They're at the same park together. Bitch, you up. What the f are you running for? You mad enough to go cheat with a bitch, but you ain't mad enough to talk to me about it. So we get that out. You cheat with me. Yeah, Don't man. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. Get that. Get the f off me. Get the f off me. Oh, y'all better get this get mother. Off of me. I know y'all better get this mother. Hell easy is that? 
Why she can't act like this when I'm at home? She Why said, she can't be on me when I'm at the crib? She said Why she's she can't be all to. up my mother? She a damn lie. I'm locked up to the house. Tell you what Your she time doing. Is all Immediately. Wow. 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 Little wow. housewives. That's who she wants. Touch me. That's who she wants. She wants to call him. Well, at least they are actually working. Your man needs their time. Wait till I see Candy with Eddie. Wait till I see a little scrappy. Man, little scrappy. No. She don't ever come give me no motherfucking love. Right, so I'm saying, so I go out and get some more. Now she wants some motherfucking man. attention. Man, man, let's go. Then get the out of my house. I will. Little you bitch, we gonna see how long you be living with this house. You gonna be on the street because you ain't gonna have no way to pay no more. I'm a whole lot broke at me. Damn, sell 40. You got this bitch driving a minivan and you gonna yeah, compare this home to me? It don't matter, bitch. Look what I give it was the build home. Why you still look fighting? Look at me. Come on. Look at me. Why you look still fighting? And look at you. Why you, you still get your ass off me, Why you ho? still fighting? Because you a bitch. Yeah. You yeah. a bitch. You can't be yeah. that. You're, get the yeah. off me. Get out of my car. You right in my damn view. Where this bitch at? She's right over there. can't even see. Can y'all move? Van. Why you all over there talking, bitch? I'm over here. Nah, bitch. Don't leave. Weak ass ho. This ho. Oh, she's turning around. Where you going, bitch? Where you going, ho? Where you going, bitch? Where you going? Where you going? Get your bitch toy ass off me, ho. Get the bitch, bitch. Get the f on me, ho. Get your ass off me. Get the Yeah. Get your ass off me, bitch. Weak ass ho. Run your motherfucking ass up again. Weak ass. She driving. Come on, let's you go. Shirt? You my shirt? Yeah, let's go. Before you leave, man, can I get one word before we leave? What's that? I understand if she doesn't do things that please you, but four years. Just remember, four years. I loved her enough to take care of the mother. And then you want to get on camera. You want to get on camera and talk. America going to be mad at me because this broke ass. No, because you were honest. Hey, you were honest. And that's what I want to say. Thank hey, you man, for it. Damn call for we out on this phone. You talking about broke? My bands is paid for, it, baby. I'm upgrading her like I upgraded your dumb ass. Nah, bitch, you ain't upgrading. Right. My Go. my car. Go. 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 After the confrontation. Jessica ponders the best course to follow. Stay tuned as Cheaters divulges her choice. But next, Cheater sits down with Kat. Kat comes forward and bears all to tell her side of the story about the afternoon she was caught with another woman's husband. Well, it was just like any other day we were going to work on the sculpture and it was really hot in there. Um, he was rubbing, I think, water on my, bite, my back and we were, we were intimate for a moment. And the next thing I know, chaos breaks loose and all these strange people come running in. This woman comes in screaming like a lunatic, screaming at me, pushing me. And I didn't know what was going on until afterwards. And I was just mortified. What are you doing? What is this? God damn it. What does it look like? What does it look like? I'm his wife, honey. The about. I know all about. that they had an open marriage and that his wife had like seen the sculpture and she was keeping up with what we were doing and you know once I realized it was his wife and that she was unaware of everything that he told me was a lie and I was insulted and I, my feelings were hurt and once the shock wore off I was just angry. I have no use for him he does not need to contact me if anyone needs a reference or anything on him he's not gonna like what I have to say um, I'll vouch that no one needs to work with him again. He's untrustworthy, and he's a pig. Was this sculpture right here based on, on your on your body? I was modeling for this guy, and he said that his wife and him had some sort of weird relationship, and she went down with all this, and I don't know what the f*** chose you. I built my life around you. Oh, my God. I'm ready to have a child. We I built my life around you. I'm ready to have a child with you. I want to build a future with you. And this is... This is what you give. You don't tell me this I'm not even worthy of that. You know, so you're making it like I'm not even worthy of that. Uh, this, this is what's so freaking important to you right here. This stupid piece of. Oh. You don't know our Johnny. You don't know it. You don't know anything. With everything that transpired 
Um, I'm almost glad that it did because it did teach me a lot about the industry and how to move forward in it and to do my research and my homework on photographers and artists. And it was my fault as well as anyone else's for being naive and not not paying attention to what was right in front of me. My career is going great though. Um, I'm still getting gigs and having fun. So I'm not gonna let him you know, stop me from doing what I do and what I love. Directly after the confrontation, Jessica Sanders packed her bags and moved out of the residence she shared with the suspect. Jessica swears that there exists a man somewhere just for her. When approached by Cheater's producers, the suspect acquiesces half-heartedly that he did wrong by Jessica. However, he refuses to explain his actions. The companion, Tanae, would only state to Cheaters that she and the suspect continue to see one another.